Hey guys, Ryan here, Ryan Tech Marine again. Just wanted to show you tonight my new uh, transducer mount for the uh, Garmin GT54 UDH TM. Same basic design as uh, what my Lawrence guys have been uh, loving for a long, long time now. Um, same great features um, and a uh, few features that are only on this one that uh, are not on the uh, Lowrance one that I've been doing for a long time. But uh, basically, um, it's a transducer mount that will allow you to run uh, really decently at speed. Heavy duty, it's not plastic like the mount that this one here came with. Um, and uh, be able to get it nice low into the water. Um, that's critical when you're trying to read at uh, once you're up on plane is that it's actually in the water and reading nicely. Um, so there's some great features that I've incorporated into this one and uh, I'll just go over this now. So um, first thing, the design of it has an actual through bolt with uh, the center bushing. So what that actually does is uh, infinite leveling so you can level it really nicely um, you know there's no little star locks or anything like that that limit you on uh, where it needs to go like some other mounts and uh, a lot of the factory ones um, and uh, because the through bolt is there you can actually adjust the tension on the bolt that you can either have it so you lock it down solid so it never ever moves you know if you're in uh, deep clear water running the Great Lakes or whatnot you know you're not worried about ever hitting anything um, no debris, no stumps, things like that. Um, lock it down solid, never move again, never have to think about it once you uh, get it fine-tuned. Or for the guys that, you know, you're a bass guy, you're in and around stumps all the time, just at low speed, um, basically set it that uh, it's movable. Um, you adjust the tension of it. Um, once you're in the water, the water acts as a bit of a lubricant. Um, let me move this out of the way. Uh, water acts as a bit of a lubricant, so it uh, you can have it tight once it's up on shore, but when it's in the water, it moves a bit. So you want to fine-tune it just when it's in the water. Just reach your hand over, see how it is, tighten it up a little bit more. Um, but what actually happens is that, uh, say you were to hit something not very hard, but just put pressure on it, and actually can kick the transducer up and uh, get it out of the way. Um, works really well. My uh, Lawrence guys that have been running it for the last two years have uh, really liked that feature. Um, so this one here actually has the same grommet um, as my Lowrance ones and all my other brackets do. Every single of my trolling motor mounts, they all have the same uh, kind of system here. So um, it's basically a grommet with a slot in it. You put it up in the hole and uh, push it in and uh, keeps the cable from chafing and touching anything. No pinching. You don't have to worry about zip tying to anything. And then uh, just mount it up however you want. Um, so the actual uh, transducer itself, um, I got about quarter inch to probably about three eighths of an inch more travel than the stock uh, bracket did. Um, so you'll be able to adjust it. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but on my Lawrence and Hummingbird transducer mounts that are the exact same design as this, I actually have different heights of uh, upper and lower mounts. So here's an actual Hummingbird one so you can see. This is a uh, a tall mount, so um, by putting that one on there, you're getting three quarters of an inch additional height. And then I actually have a uh, a lowering mount also that is like this one here. Um, uh, basically, it drops the transducer down half an inch. So I'll have other ones of those available here in the next uh, coming weeks. Just haven't had time to uh, finish them off. But what that will land up doing is. Uh, you know, for a guy that, uh, you know, you want more fine tuning, tuning where you had the holes in the transom for your stock bracket, um, you don't want to drill new holes, especially if you're going directly into the transom. So say you're not getting enough travel to actually lower the transducer down into good clear water, you can actually go with my raised mount. Um, the holes, your holes can be in the exact same spot. But then the actual transducer is then three quarters of an inch lower. So you might actually have to raise the bracket up a little bit to actually get the uh, transducer exactly where it needs to be. Um, other uh, cool little feature, I incorporated this little angle into there just to deflect the water. So the water shooting along and goes down. Ideally with this transducer, you're going to want to have the water, you know, about half an inch just up into the middle of the actual curve there is a really good spot to uh, start with and then fine tune. Um, again, what I recommend for all my uh, 
big transducers like this is uh, you'll hear a lot of guys talking about leveling on the water. That's great. Um, you know, if you're sitting there, all that, you can uh, definitely level it that way. But for the person that wants to uh, get up and read on plane, the problem is you level the boat while it's in the water. Once you get up on plane, the actual transducer, the fulcrum of the boat's the transom. That's the back of the boat that's touching the water. So the front lifts, the back anything behind the transom then goes down into the water. So you get up on plane and all of a sudden your transducer is down into the water. You're not going to be reading anymore because the front may be out of the water getting hit. So you want to fine tune it. And then uh, this is pretty extreme, but you know, I always recommend going to level and then bumping it up a few degrees higher at the back. Because what that's going to do then is once the boat gets up on plane, it's actually going to be level then with the water, and uh, you'll get good reading. Um, my Lowrance guys, for those that uh, know about the uh, Lowrance uh, structure scan transducers, they're 10 and a half, 11 inches long. Um, and uh, with the factory mounts, they're really hard to uh, read at anything, you know, 20 miles an hour in your uh, lost depth and uh, not marking fish. Uh, my brackets allow guys to run 50, 60 miles an hour, no problem, and uh, marking fish. So it's just that fine tuning and adjustment that uh, is going to do this. So you got that little deflection piece there that I incorporated into it. Um, got the logo and the uh, RTG 1200. It's hard to see back in there, but it's actually in there. So down the road, um, you know, you can uh, remember what actual bracket this is. One other cool little feature I have, might be hard to see in the video, is there's a little tiny, uh, let me see, it's something to poke here. There's a little tiny groove right there. Um, yeah, you can see it on the video there. That's a little locating mark that I put into both sides. Um, so when you are setting this up and you have it fine-tuned and, you know, you're getting perfect arches, you can read its speed, whatnot, Get the boat out of the water, let it dry for a couple hours. And then all I do is on the opposite side, I take a magic uh, marker or a Sharpie and actually make a mark there. And then what happens is if your transducer ever moves down the road, um, you know, you're out in the water and you do hit something and, you know, all of a sudden your arches aren't there. They're all angled funny. Um, basically, if you're in clear water, you can look over the boat and make sure that the line lines up to that. Or when you get out at the end of the day, pull it out um, onto shore, it's on the trailer, you can quickly adjust this back to where it needs to be. So it's a great feature and a lot of uh, my customers like that. Um, one of the thing is the slots are bigger on my mount, so I actually make it so you can run up to a number 14 if you want. Typically, most people will run a uh, number 12 screw. I have them available on the website. Um, I have them number 10s, 12s, and 14s, but uh, most will run a, uh, a 12, but some guys want to go over poke kill and uh, run a 14. That's almost like a lag bolt, but uh, each to their own, but the uh, bracket's big enough there that uh, you can do that. Um, these little holes are just for something in the future. I playing around with uh, with my Lowrance brackets that uh, they actually have a, uh, a slip cover basically that you can put over the transducer for when you're trailering to uh, keep rocks and dust and all that stuff from hitting. So that's just for a, a little snap to uh, fit into there and that might happen in the future here. Um, I'll run the uh, Lowrance ones for a while and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then if they're popular, I'll uh, do them for the gardens and the hummingbirds and whatnot else. So that's what that little hole there is for. So again, that's the uh, new Garmin uh, GT54 UDHTM. And uh, one other thing, this is also going to be available in an actual jack plate bracket. So the bottom will be a little bit different than the actual jack plate mount, but I'll have that coming here in the next uh, week or so. I'll take some videos. They're done. I uh, just got to get them assembled and uh, get them on the road. So that's it, guys. So if you have any questions, message me through the uh, YouTube page here. You can uh, always reach me at uh, on Right Tech Marine on Facebook or Instagram, or you can uh, email me directly through the website, righttechmarine.com. And uh, everything that I have is on the website um, and available. Um, so have a look at the website and uh, or you can also give me a call. My numbers on uh, Facebook are on the website. So if you have any questions and you physically want to talk to me, just give me a shout and uh, we'll go from there. So that's the uh, new Garmin transducer map. Have a good night, guys.